16 years ago, we saw the single greatest individual competitive performance in all of Big Brother. Janelle Pierzino went on an unbelievable tear in the All-Star House, racking up four HOHs and five POVs, finishing with a total of nine comp wins and a 60% win rate for the season. Since then, many have tried to match her record, but nobody has been successful. With the number of competitions increasing each season and even still nobody touching her nine comp wins, it was becoming pretty clear that we would likely never see someone as dominant and efficient as Janelle was. But all of that was about to change once Michael came along. You see, Michael was this tall, lanky super fan that entered the Big Brother 24 house just like everybody else. But once he was nominated in the very first week, he uttered these four words that kicked off this unbelievable competitive journey. What would Janelle do? Well, that question ended up being a lot more literal than anybody could have ever imagined. So without further ado, let's take a look at Michael's unbelievable competitive performance throughout Big Brother 24, and you may be surprised at the fact that it's somehow even more impressive than it looks on paper. WWJD, what would Janelle do? I won the first power veto. <laughs> Janelle would get out there and win the veto. She would fight her ass off. Starting things off on night one, Michael went out and unceremoniously lost to the first HOH due to placing second in his heat of the initial comps. Now, I'm going to ask you to take a nice, long look at this right here. Yep, enjoy it. Because this is going to be the last time you see Michael lose a competition that he tries to win for a very long time. After losing the first HOH, Michael was nominated for eviction and a possible target to send home, but Michael channeled his inner Janelle, asked WWJD, what would Janelle do, and went out and in a very close battle, he won the first veto of the summer. It was a medieval-themed snag the rings on your lance type of competition, and with his back against the wall, he snagged better than anybody else, and he came through, putting Michael's first win on the board. At the end of three passes, we are tied at 12. It's time for sudden death. Michael with a sword of four to three in the sudden death round. Michael, you win the golden power of Vito! Oh my god, I just won the golden power of Vito. This one's for you, Janelle. And my fiance, of course. To start week two, Michael dominated his heat in the HOH, and then once it was down to just himself and Jasmine, he threw it to her, getting second place on purpose when he probably could have won it himself. Michael was not nominated this week, but was chosen to play in the veto, and in a position where he wanted to ensure Pooch stayed on the block and was evicted over Taylor, Michael went out and won the veto for the second straight week in this weird mermaid slithering comp, adding a second win to his resume. I can't risk Pooch coming from behind, so I need to line up my shot sink it, and win my second veto of the season. Oh my, oh. Oh, my oh my god, I just won my second veto of the summer and I am freaking out. Hey, I'm starting to think that maybe gold is my color. Heading into week three, it's basically a rinse and repeat of the prior week. Michael once more threw the HOH competition, albeit he threw it much earlier this time. However, this week he ended up on the block alongside his festy bestie Brittany. This fetal competition was played in pairs with their besties, and with Nicole throwing the comp and Jasmine passing out, it was basically a race against himself to win the veto. But regardless of how we got there, a win is a win, and Michael won his third veto in a row alongside Brittany, making him just the second person in the history of Big Brother to win the first three vetoes of the season and also bringing his overall comp wins up to three in just three weeks. Be careful. Are you ready? Bring me down, bring me down, Brit. That's my best. Do it, do it, do it, do it. Do it. Together, together. <laughs> yes. Brittany, how does it feel to be a veto winner? Um, it amazing. In week four, we do get an actual Michael loss in the HOH, but it was literally just due to bad luck. The players had to find an invitation that was randomly hidden inside an envelope, and Michael just wasn't lucky enough to find one, so I'm not really going to count this against him. Then, for the first time all season, Michael wasn't chosen to play in the veto, so week four is kind of just a bye week for Michael in the house. I'm sure not being able to win anything in week four had Michael foaming at the mouth for a bounce back comp win, especially since now he had real incentive to win the HOH. Him and Brittany were the only set of festy besties to not have an outsider on their team, leaving them vulnerable to be evicted if the other side won power. The week five HOH was the balance beam comp, and the fastest to get through the course would win. After Daniel put up a pretty solid time, Michael had no choice but to go all out and try for the 
the quickest but hardest path to the buzzer. And when Michael stepped up to the plate, he absolutely crushed it, beating Daniel's time by five seconds in becoming the Week 5 HOH. Following this, the veto comp was Otev, and Michael, of course, had a strategy ready. Recognizing that all you had to do was not come in last each round, when he would find an answer early, he would wait around, stockpile some other answers for future rounds, and then go to his pedestal once it was necessary. Even with seven people playing in the veto as opposed to the usual six, Michael's strategy worked like a charm, and he won the veto, his fourth of the season and fifth competition win overall. At this point, Michael had already broken a few records, as this was the earliest any player had ever gotten four veto wins, and this was also the most wins any player had ever gotten in the pre-jury stage of the game. Michael was unstoppable. I need to win this HOH to keep me and Brittany safe this week. Daniel's time is really fast, so I'm gonna have to play it risky and go for the shortest path. Wow. Oh my God, wow. dude. Oh my God. Michael, with a score of 11.79 seconds, you are the new head of household. <laughs> I have bought every single week to stay in this house, and I'm just checking items off my BB bucket list left and right, and HOH is a big one. The important thing about each round isn't about coming in first, it's about not coming in last. So once I find the correct answer, I'm going to take some extra time to build up my stockpile to help me for future rounds. Luckily, I've got my handy stockpile. Now it's time to claim the veto. Oh, no way. Congratulations. Thank you. I just won OTEB. I've now officially won all four vetoes I've competed in, and I should probably stop winning before I become too big of a threat. As the outgoing HOH, Michael was unable to compete in the Week 6 HOH, and on top of that, Michael was not selected to play in the Week 6 veto. So Michael got a legitimate full buy this week, not competing in anything. Just like the last time though, coming off a week with no comp wins, you could tell that Michael was itching for another one. At a certain point, there's not that much use in throwing these competitions to try and lower your threat level because really, what's the difference between winning five comps and winning six comps? So even if it wasn't Michael's intended strategy, he was at a point where he could just ball out in any competition knowing that everyone already saw him as a comp piece. And of course, he kicks that logic off right away. The week seven HOH was a Where's Waldo styled quiz comp, but the catch was that there would be two winners as this was the week that the house would be split in two. So all Michael would have to do would be one of the last two standing in order to win the HOH. You obviously know that Michael finished in the top two because of course he did. But not only that, Michael also managed to beat Terrence, the other player who became HOH in the head-to-head -head finals so that he could live inside the house for the week and wouldn't be stuck living outside. So even if the week hadn't crowned two HOHs, Michael would have been the sole HOH. Oh, also that was Michael's sixth competition win. Michael, you ran in, rang in first with B. Michael, you rang in first, answering A. <laughs> Michael, you rang in first with B. Oh. So, congratulations to you, Michael. You have won this competition. America, you are looking at the first two-time HOH of the season, and on top of that, the HOH of Big Brochella. But I'm so excited. Oh, I'm so excited. Once the house split, the veto competition was the classic stay or fold comp. In the comp, Michael's initial strategy was to purposefully be overestimating his guesses so that later on, the other players would just think that Michael was really bad at guessing and therefore be more susceptible to staying and getting eliminated once Michael started trying. So Michael folded the first two rounds, even though his actual guesses were almost spot on. Michael then took more initiative in the next two rounds in the hope of knocking out Monty and Jasmine, and he earned two out of the three letters he would need in order to win. Then on the final question, he did get beat by Brittany, who guessed just the tiniest bit higher than him. So even though Brittany did win the veto, there's a few things we gotta take into consideration. Firstly, Michael was throwing the first two rounds of the comp that allowed Brittany to get into that winning position. And had Michael chosen to stay in those rounds instead of folding, he would have won after just three rounds, as fast as you could win. Secondly, some gorgeous soul on the Big Brother Reddit actually did the math, and even taking Michael's purposeful throw on the first question into consideration, Michael performed better than anybody ever has in the Stairfold competition in the history of the show. So yeah, even in Michael's first veto loss of the season, he still did better than anyone had ever done before. This guy is bananas. 
it looks like one frame has about 60 guitar picks and there are 12 frames on the wall. So 12 times 60 is 720. However, I decided to write down 1200 as my final answer. People might think I'm overestimating on my numbers and ignore my guess when deciding whether to stay or fold. There are 719 guitar picks. What is your answer? 7,200 gummies. The correct answer is 6,999 gummy candies. 340 drumsticks. The correct answer is 351 drumsticks. 1,025 liquid ounces. The correct answer is 1,120 ounces. 370 energy drinks. The correct answer is 388 energy drinks. So now, heading into week eight, Michael is not allowed to participate in the HOH, so he has to sit on the sidelines. Turner won the HOH, and there was a plan to try and backdoor Michael, as this was at the final eight, and there was a decent chance that Michael wouldn't be chosen to play. However, Michael caught wind of this and was more determined than ever to win the veto if he was chosen to play, and luckily for him, he was chosen. The veto ended up being the slip and slide. While this competition typically favors the bigger muscular players, that didn't stop Michael from absolutely wiping the floor as he usually does, crushing everybody. Honestly, it wasn't even all that close, and before you knew it, Michael had won his fifth power of veto, his seventh competition win overall, and crushed any possibility of being backdoored. This win right here tied Michael for the single season Dito record and the fact that he did it at the final eight is absolutely ridiculous as the other four players in the show's history to have won five vetoes in a single season and needed all the way up until the final four to do so. I don't want to get picked for the veto. I have to get picked for the veto. If I'm not playing in the veto this week, I'm going home. Michael. Of course Michael gets picked. This is absolutely worst case scenario. Who knows, maybe his last four veto wins were just a fluke. The first decision I need to make is which receptacle to start filling. The big one or the small one. So I'm using my wine glass as a measuring tool. I don't think it's worth wasting my time on the small receptacle, so I'm just gonna start filling the large one. I am completely amazed by how fast Michael is going through this competition. Congratulations, Michael. You have won the golden power of veto. I was probably going to go home if I didn't win this veto. This is for Hayden. This is for every queer kid out there. Just know that you are valid, you are loved, and you matter, and this is for all of you. After almost being backdoored, Michael was more determined than ever to win the Week 9 HOH, and lo and behold, Michael goes out and completes his puzzle before it looks like anyone else even started. Like, nobody else was even in the same time zone as Michael, and when looking at the end result, it looked like he was given a 5-minute head start. Also, props to Michael for still diving at the finishing button when it was clear that no one else was even dreaming about finishing. You've got to be kidding me. I'm watching Michael just run away with this competition. Oh my yes. God. Oh my God. Congratulations, Michael. You are the new head of household. Thank you. I just won my third HOH of the summer and it feels incredible. Anyways, this was Michael's third HOH win in a row and his eighth overall comp win. Who would want to stop at eight wins though? The week nine veto competition was BB Comics and as a super fan, why not go for the win? Even though Michael was the favorite heading into the comp and even though he tried his best, he unfortunately wasn't able to, no, I'm joking. Michael obviously won the veto in a landslide. Not only did he win the veto, but with it, Michael broke the single season veto record with his sixth win, something that nobody, not even Janelle, had ever accomplished before. With this, Michael became the undisputed veto king. There was a time when I was worried I'd be seen as a threat if I won too many competitions, but we're way past that point, so there's no holding back now. Oh my god. I have the chance to break the record for the most veto wins in a single season. Janelle set this record back in season seven with five, and today I could get my sixth. I want to break this 16 year old record. Michael, your time was? 
Michael, your score was nine minutes and six seconds. You have won the golden power of veto. Oh my I just won my sixth veto of the summer and I am freaking out. With that, I broke the record for the single most veto competition wins in a single summer. The only option I have now at this point is to keep winning, so that's what I'm gonna try to do. Wow, nine total competition wins. It had been 16 years since Janelle first set the record at nine wins in Big Brother 7. And after all that time, through 17 seasons, only Michael was able to match it. And really, it was incredible. The fact that Michael had nine comp wins and they hadn't even reached the end game yet is likely unreplicable. At this point, if Michael were to have won every competition that he could have competed in up until the very end, he would have ended with a ridiculous 14 competition wins with five HOHs and nine POVs. Unfortunately for Michael though, BB Comics would unknowingly be his last competition win. At the start of week 10, at the final six, it was announced to be a double eviction. As the prior HOH, Michael had to sit out and watch his Turner one. Then, at the veto, something pretty much unprecedented happened. Michael lost while actually trying to win the whole time. Crazily enough, this was the first veto comp all season long in which Michael did not perform the best, and Monty was able to snag the veto win. Now, there is a little bit of an asterisk here, because apparently at one point during the veto, Michael's setup broke. I'm not sure if it was his rope or a piece of his rope, but you can hear him talk about it during the comp and being unsure of what he could even do at that point. However, a loss is a loss, and Monty won fair and square. With nine competition wins, there was no way that the others could let Michael slide on by where he likely would have won out from there. So Michael was then put on the block and sent home in sixth place. But boy, did Michael fight to stay until the very last minute. I'd love to go more in depth on it, but I think we'd better save that for Thursday's video. Overall, Michael brought a competitive tenacity that had never really been seen before in any Big Brother season. Michael's run was unprecedented, and likely we will never see anything like that again unless Michael comes back and plays Big Brother once more. In week one, before his first veto competition, Michael asked, what would Janelle do? Well, Janelle had gone on to win nine comps out of 15 when she played on All-Stars, having a 60% win rate. Michael, on the other hand, had nine wins out of 15 that he played in, the exact same ratio as Janelle with the exact same win rate. Michael took his WWJD a little bit too seriously, it seems. Hell, Michael even had the same number of confessionals as Janelle had, but that's off topic. As I said, Michael had finished the season with nine wins out of 15 total comps, but even of the six that he lost, one was a completely random comp, one he threw to Jasmine and therefore got second, one he performed better than literally anyone in the history of the show had, and one he just threw early because he didn't want to win it. That leaves us with only two competitions that Michael just flat out lost, and coincidentally, it was his first and his last competition. The first HOH he lost because he got second in his heat, and I can understand maybe having some jitters because, well, it was like 30 minutes after after he walked into the house for the first time. I'd certainly have jitters too. In the second competition that he flat out lost, the last veto, we saw his equipment break, which definitely disadvantaged him a little bit. But at this point, I'm just nitpicking for the sake of nitpicking. In my opinion, Michael just had, without a doubt, the single greatest competitive performance out of anyone on any season of Big Brother ever, and I felt that it was worth the video to talk about. You have, any time your backup was against the wall, you would manage a win. Not tonight. <laughs> Not tonight. Not tonight. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new here, consider subscribing. We recently just hit 20,000 subscribers, and although I'm not going to be all that wild every time a milestone is reached, this was still a pretty cool one, so thank you. I, of course, need to give that extra special shout out to all of my YouTube members who are probably the only people who could give Michael a run for their money in the veto comps. And as always, here's a clip for you on your way out. I've nominated Michael and Terrence for eviction. Terrence is definitely my pawn and Michael is my target. There's only room for one super fan in this house. So I think Daniel's explanation for putting me up is bull Daniel, if I close one eye, your head is right between these pieces of bread and that means I just made an idiot sandwich. <laughs> Daniel, you nominated me and you used the veto that backdoored your best friend. I'd say good game, but I'd be lying. Bye, Daniel.